As Darwin observed, males are almost always the wooers, hence the prevalence of nuptial gifts in nature, and females are more selective in mating than are males. Mismating costs a female much wasted nurture and lost reproductive potential. Women are much less likely than men to engage in sexual contacts with non-human animals and inanimate objects. They are also less inclined to homosexuality. Since females determine which males breed, males exhibit greater variance in reproductive success. In elephant seals, 4% of the males sire 85% of the pups. DNA analysis shows that historically 80% of women reproduced, but only 40% of men did. As Nietzsche put it, men are the barren sex. Biologically speaking, the majority of males are dispensable. Sex cannot persist at all unless there is more selection on males than on females, and mammals express more genetic variants from the father, so males function as a genetic filter. The male-male contest establishes the more reproductively fit males, and the females then choose those males, so the genetic quality becomes higher, as does the number of offspring. Female selection of males, according to genetic quality, is clearest in the Lex system, common in several bird families, some mammals, fish and insects. A fixed geographic site where males of a species aggregate for courtship displays to females. In grouse, for example, the preferred males are the oldest. For years they have to eat well, evade predators, stay healthy and win fights, thus giving females an honest signal of their genetic quality. But symmetry also honestly signals genetic quality, because symmetrical bodies are harder to grow than asymmetrical ones. E.O. Wilson said that biology keeps culture on a leash, and women across cultures prefer more symmetrical males. Symmetry is associated not only with bigger, taller, and more muscular bodies, but also slightly higher IQ and better mental and physical health. More symmetrical men bring their wives to orgasm more often, increasing the chance of pregnancy by opening the cervix. Symmetry is also positively correlated with sperm number per ejaculate and sperm motility. Attraction to more symmetrical men at the time of peak fertility is most evident in women married to less symmetrical men. In a short-term partner, women value symmetry and dominance. In a long-term partner, women value financial prospects more than men do placing a higher value on success, earnings and status. Men value youth in women because female fertility peaks at about age 20. Teenage boys rate a woman five years older than them as the perfect partner. Prostitutes can charge twice as much at 20 years old as they can at 30. Men also value beauty and symmetry as indicators of genetic fitness. The 0.7 waist to hip ratio is particularly desirable in women because a small waist to hip ratio is associated with higher fertility and higher neonatal birth weight. But waist depth versus waist circumference is an even stronger indicator. In the US, women spend twice as much time on makeup as on books. Makeup mimics youth, corrects asymmetries, and signals sexuality. Whereas investment after sex is always greater for females, males invest very heavily in competition before sex. It is worth noting here that if males are the stronger sex, it is only in terms of physical strength. Yearling stags suffer twice the mortality rate of females, and they continue to die off faster throughout adulthood, mostly due to competition for females. Human males also die younger, and male competition does not end when a fertilization is won, another male may still usurp the female's reproductive capacity. Males continue to compete for reproductive opportunity, manifesting in humans as adultery law, violence between individual men and between kinship groups, and coercive constraint of women. Not only female fertility, but also female fidelity is highly prized.